Welcome everyone to Voice of Terminus show number 14. Today we are talking about thoughts and ideas towards crafting. And I'm joined today with my host, Delinzia. Say hello, Delinzia. Hey, everybody. And we have Lexa with us. Say hello, Lexa. Hello, people. And our director, Kodiak, will not be with us today. He's uh, taking some leave. He will be back next week. So you have to put up with us three today. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to start bringing up the topic crafting what are your thoughts general thoughts guys towards crafting Just throw in some uh, thoughts here before we go into the ideas that people have posted and uh, we'll talk about them in a minute who wants to start uh, well, let's see let's fight over who's gonna go <laughs> I'll, I'll let you go first oh well thank you kind sir um, I'll be all gentlemanly I'd like to see the crafting system in Pantheon to be kind of similar to the uh, EverQuest 1 crafting system. However, with a few slight modifications. Mm. But that's kind of my idea, because I liked how you could skill up. You could do almost everything, but it came to a point where you could only master in one or two. That'd be it. That's why I think it should be. I don't think everybody should be able to craft everything complete. Yeah. Um, or ma I should say master everything completely. Because that would just be... It just completely screw up the economy. And then crafting is no longer an important uh, uh, part of the game anymore. So, you know, a lot of players would be, well, why should I craft? Everybody can craft the same crap. And yeah. it for me. Yeah, I can definitely agree with that. It uh, one of the things that's always pushed me away from being a crafter again is just the simple fact that I'm not special in any way, shape, or And we lost Lexa. <laughs> oh no! Technical difficulties. Let me finish from what he was saying. I agree with Dal. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, Thanks, we Lexa. lost him. Lexa, that's it. That was Lexa's input for today. <laughs> yeah, I'll hey, try buddy. and get him back. I'll try You're and get him back here. in the call here. See what's going on. User in your channel time. Oh, out. I think he's. Uh, he'll be back <laughs> in a minute. His internet so, went down. It looks like. <laughs> yep, looks like his internet crashed. So I'm going to go and uh, bring up the thoughts ideas? and ideas from people while we wait so, for him to return yeah bring up the thoughts and ideas and we'll ask the chat so chat what do you think what would you like to see in uh, the uh, Pantheon crafting system yep so you guys can see on the screen some uh, ideas a few people posted to us um, Safris posted how the possibility of group crafting um, Joshua had uh, some multiple questions. We'll go through them as soon as Lex is there, but you can have a quick look to get your ideas maybe towards these questions. That is very quiet, Cricket. Yep. Oh my gosh, look at all those ideas that are so tiny. tiny. <laughs> I'm going to have to expand my screen. You've expanded mm. yourself completely. Look, you're large. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, let me give my my thought process on crafting, my general my general input while we wait for Alexa to come back. So, crafting should be just as important in an MMO as the adventuring is. It should be something that isn't uh, just a side adventure that you can do um, to to pass the time. Yes, the general idea is for people to have something to do while their, you know, while the, their guildmates aren't on or the group friends aren't on, etc. But they should try and make it a bit more towards where crafting actually plays a, a real important part towards the general game itself. I mean, we all know that the adventuring has its storyline and its lore and everything behind it, and it, and obviously, you know, that's your your main your main uh, story and everything. But crafting should be just as important. Is what I what I think, and um, yeah, 
So what's, what's the chat saying? So basic skill in most, but specialize in one, maybe two from Dark Soul Omega. Yep. Our thoughts exactly. You should be able to craft almost everything. Yeah, but, just basics. Yep, the basic stuff, but you should have to select after a certain amount of, let's say, gathering your talent. You choose your path you want to go so let's say for instance now you try out weaponsmith you try out armor smith and you try out i don't know um shield smith so you can basically that oh, looks like lex has come back on I'll all right wait for him to actually log back into uh people are cool okay. he's not up yet okay so like i said you've got those three basic uh trees and you have to specialize in one. You choose one you want to go down. So you become a uh, black, you know, an armor smith or a shield smith or a weapon smith as one of your priority choices. And the second choice, though, I think should be something that is like um, a general crafting ability that that doesn't really impact the normal crafting. Um, basic jobs like blacksmiths or you know tailors and stuff like that it should be something that's more generalized so let's say for instance let's call it let's say first aid for instance you know that could be something that you could learn you could learn first aid as a second uh crafting job or you could do i don't know whatever basically <coughs> you there lex he's here but uh, he's not in team speak yeah, I think he's getting that all set up. Okay. Um, I think, like uh, PC Dunkley said, I also like to see crafting an important part of a major quest. I agree. I think mm. uh, there should be some sort of crafting in some of your quests and stuff like that. Yeah, it should be. You know, it, it should it should play out a role as well. You know, the, when when crafters go out into dungeons and stuff, if you're a crafter, you know, they User they should have channel. they should have drops <laughs> towards that as well. Welcome back. Sorry about that, guys. No worries. Yeah, stuff's right. happening. You know, it's not the voice of Terminus show. It's not Dal and Yanila without some kind of mess up, you know. That's how we roll. Without technical difficulties and stuff like that, this show <laughs> doesn't work. You know, this is the comedy aspect of the show. You're gonna have challenge. Yep. Yeah. Oh my goodness, yeah. Windows blue screen. Crazy stuff. Nice. So, you want to get back onto uh, your general what, what input? <laughs> Oh, well, what I was basically saying is crafting right now in almost every game, just there's nothing to make you feel special. I mean, you're just the same as the next guy. Mm -hmm. Even in terms of, like, say... Uh, You've uh -oh. gone silent. Gone we can't hear you. <laughs> oh, here we go. Hey, here we go. He's blowing up on his side. Yeah, he's been surfing too many porn sites. <laughs> he got spam. We can't hear you, dude. Can't hear you, bro. Can't hear you, bro. Uh. No, but um. Anyway, he's getting on. Timed out. Yep, he timed out again. He's gonna get frustrated. Let's see. Yep, he's gonna yep, go into yep. rage and beat his keyboard. Oh, he's going mad already. He's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, try to get back to crafting here while Lexor figures out his uh, PC and whether he can craft a new one. Yep. Um, let's see, where were we? Okay, so yeah, like uh, Lexor was saying, yeah, you want to make it where crafting, what's in it for me? What's going to make me kind of feel special in the uh, crafting environment? And some of the ideas we were shooting around too, um, just on the side and some off, off conversations, we were thinking about, well, Let's make uh, crafting important, but player important as well. So, uh, <laughs> so player important crafting. Look at think of it in this way. Um, what are you got? Your different crafting skills. You got your blacksmith. You got your leather guy. Your Fletcher. Um, your alchemist. Your jeweler. Okay, so you have all these Use different uh, crafting uh, trades and abilities. So what if, because a lot of MMOs try to say, hey, look, uh, players impact the world with their crafting. Well, what we were thinking about was a way for the player to impact the world 
and make sure that their trade skill is important because some MMOs people just go straight into blacksmithing. That's the ultimate because you need the most badass armor on the battlefield, right? So everybody wants to become a blacksmith. Well, we were discussing, well, what if you can make it that each individual crafting skill plays an important part on that piece of armor? Yep. Okay, or that bow arrow or that axe. So, for instance, the armorer, he builds the piece and then he takes it to, uh, let's say, the uh, tailor guy. The tailor guy puts padding into the armor piece that gives it plus, um, I don't know, plus five fire, whatever they decide to do. So, and then he takes it to the jeweler. The jeweler can now socket it and put in a plus two fire gem. Yep. And then he takes it to uh, the poison alchemist or something like that. Now the alchemist guy can plug in a slot for poison type stuff or you know whatever. So each player has an effect on that one piece. So they can socket it. You can't do it. You have to take it to another player, so to speak, in a sense. Yep. But but what happens is is what we're trying to say is I can craft as an alchemist I can craft stuff for that blacksmith armor. So that armor is nothing without me. The armor didn't come into place without this other guy. So each person in the chain, they are, play an important piece to affect that armor, that weapon, whatever it may be. Yep, it so, takes it takes a chain. It's like it was similar how to how it used to work in EverQuest 2. You used to have to interact with each crafter to get to get your ground components. But we don't want to make your ground components. We want to make you know it's interacting with the final product. So it's taking it a step further. Instead of getting your ground components so you can go and build this awesome piece of armor, no, you've built the the uh, basic piece and now you're adding towards that. And then at the end, you're going to have a, an amazing product that's got, like Dow said, plus five against fire, plus, and it does fire, five, fire damage. It does, it, it absorbs um, poison damage, etc. So that gives you, as a blacksmith, a unique piece. But it's been created through multiple players. Yes, and they all play an important part. Yep. So their actual skill, their crafting skill, is important in the world. They're not just putting out crap you know and people might randomly buy it no that one piece of armor can take a trade skill from everybody and it's just a matter of the player buying those pieces from those yeah. those crafters and plug it into that armor to make it awesome so it's kind of in a sense it's a socketed piece of armor but each trade skill affects that piece of armor or that glove or that boot or that coat or that jacket or that hood everybody can affect it in some way Oh, let's, make some... let's see if my system Yay, works now. Yay, you're talking. Yay. Uh, for how long? <laughs> well, then you better uh, go would... start blabbing. Yeah, I, I would like to see each trade skill be able to branch off into separate elements. Like, for example, a blacksmith who could uh, specialize in, like, mm -hmm. fire element stuff. Or then you can get an alchemist who can do the poisons or whatever. And that way, a blacksmith isn't a blacksmith isn't a blacksmith. It's this guy's a blacksmith who is he's a specialist as a blacksmith but he's also a specialist in the type of element that he's more or less attuned with basically mm -hmm. and that way if like say oh i'm gonna go fight some big giant fire elemental in the world well i'm obviously going to be seeking out every blacksmith every weaponsmith every alchemist there is every jewel crafter to find stuff to help me against fire yeah and i'll be shouting non-stop to find them and i will pay whatever they want because I need it. Yeah, and see, that's the cool thing about it is that you know they those players can affect the armor in any way. Uh, I think we should uh, kick into the really good stuff now because there are really some cool ideas out there. So I'm going to go and quickly read off this all of it so you guys can hear the questions and maybe you know when we get to them. Uh, put your input towards it. So we're going to start off with uh, Sathris, the possibility of group crafting, multiple people opening nodes as long as some are high enough to open. Multiple opening a crafting station together to improve quality over a single crafter. Multiple crafters on a single station required for special items. Then Joshua wrote 
some questions. Should crafters be able to find new crafting recipes in raids, instances and general world adventuring? Should crafters be able to upgrade their equipment, i.e. stove, anvil, etc. over time, the more experienced they become? Should crafters be able to create guild-specific stuff, i.e. guild emblem, embossed armor, guild practice dummies, etc.? Can crafters take part in creating guild buildings from the ground up, which may include architectural layouts of the guild and location? Would crafters have the option to allocate a set percentage of their sales to pay for the guild upkeep in the long run? Would crafters be able to crit while crafting, creating better stuff or multiple extra batches of arrows, potions, etc? Would crafters be able to get bonuses to adventuring if they are masters in a specific craft, i.e. an alchemist may get a 10% increase in the duration potency of a potion he's just um, quaffed? Would a crafter be able to attune to a specific atmosphere so that the crafter creates items that naturally have bonuses to the atmosphere? Then, some of my ideas, or well, basically my thought in my thought process, uh, crafters should play a very important part within the game and be able to craft for, adventure, for, for adventurers. Crafting should be split up into different tiers, general crafting, class specific crafting, trade profession. Each crafter can contribute to a piece which we talked about already, so I'm not going to go and carry on reading that. Crafters should be able to modify the look of armour with patterns that can be found throughout the world. Crafters can make assets for mounts that change the look and give the mounts different attributes like more speed. Adding a crafting trade to tame or breed mounts. A armorsmith, tailor or weaponsmith should be able to repair armor and weapon in the field provided they have the materials on them. Crafters should be able to open a shop once they become a city crafter. And then to finalize it, some thoughts on guild housing. Claimable land within a city or just outside. Building a guild house will take all crafters combined. It should take weeks to obtain all that is needed. It should be very costly to obtain land so that it stays special. Those are some of the thoughts we got uh, throughout um, the uh, process of asking people to put their input towards it. So, we'll start off with uh, Sathris guys on group crafting. Any thoughts towards the group crafting? Group crafting would be something very, very difficult to coordinate. I mean, I mean, just from the thought of a programmer, how would I do that? Um, would I create like a stage one of a sword, and I would require an alchemist to right-click on it or to do something to it? Do I have to get components from them? It's it's a great idea, but I don't know how feasible it is to actually implement. Yeah. Um, I think you can take that group crafting, like he's saying, you can actually put that into, um, like what we were talking about, how each trade skill can actually affect that piece. In a sense, that's a group mm -hmm. is actually affecting that. A group of players, in, in some way, shape, or form, is already affecting that piece. Yeah. So, um, yeah, because as a programmer, I think that would be hard to do, is like get like three people together and craft some item that's just a little too over the top. Um, I think keep it simple stupid is the best way to go with crafting, but at the same time also make sure that it's important. Yeah. I mean, yeah. doing the uh, gathering, because he's put it down there as well, multiple people opening nodes, that's certainly definitely a possibility. Uh, uh, the thing is with nodes, my personal opinion nodes, I think it's, nodes are the bad idea. I think it should be like um, mob dropped, you know, craftable items like say the mobs you go to just for an example like crystal caverns in uh, the great divide um, orcs drop the Valium bars mm -hmm. so that's how you collected Valium there was no nodes because if you do nodes in the game you got a program and respawn on, and then you got people camping the nodes then you got people building maps to show all the nodes and then they're mm -hmm. and then they're building bots to actually get the nodes yeah. um, I would stay away from nodes. Nodes are more of an exploit uh, problem than anything else. I rather have the actual materials drop from mobs. Like you can get your leather from, um, say, a deer, you can yeah. deer, bear. And then I'm, I'm all hides. for I'm all for kill together. I guess we, what we could call it. Because yeah. um, I've been You're in get experience. Yeah, and I've been in groups where, you know, a rare 
or has spawned in an instance because it's the only place that you can find them. And I had our healer run off to go get that just mm-hmm. so they could sell it and leave our group to pretty much die. But they didn't care because they got their note. Yeah. Yeah. So that note to me just leave a bad taste in my mouth. I think Guild Wars 2 has a decent enough take on the nodes where like the nodes are all instanced for everybody. So if I go take an, a bronze uh, a bronze vein or a bronze node, I, I mind that. You can come up behind me and get the same node, even though I don't see it anymore. Mm. Because that, that lowers the competition, but at the same time, there's a, there's a downside to that too. The market becomes oversaturated with materials. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think a good mix of, of, of things, because to be honest with you guys, um, if I want to go and chop, if I want to go and gather wood, then I'm going to go and chop down a tree. Yeah, it's just that simple. You get wood from a tree, you don't get it from monsters. But certain things like, like Dow said, like Valium bars or gold and everything, that's stuff that isn't easy and accessible to everyone to, to get. It shouldn't be just an open world. So, so m- minerals like that, materials like that, should be off monsters that are, you know, like mm-hmm. in, in, in a mine gathering this stuff, harvesting this stuff. So you get that from the monsters, right. obviously. But, you know, your basic materials like, like trees and everything, I think it should be a good, it should be a mix that you can node a tree but you gather gold and and valium bars and and emeralds and gems from the monsters because that makes sense because you're not going to go out and run about and there's going to be minerals and gold and everything lying about it's it just doesn't it's just not realistic so i'd prefer a kind of mix and match to to do that obviously the best solution would be best solution would be voxel world I think I think it would work very well because it doesn't make sense to if I'm after lumber that I should have to go kill freaking treants. Mm. I mean, it, it makes perfect sense that I would get lumber from a tree and he's a walking mm. tree. Yeah. But in the same sense, why can't I just go to a tree and get wood? You know. Yeah. I mean, so, that's that's a possibility they could do. Yeah. If they do something like mining nodes, that stuff needs to be like in a mine. Yeah, like or, underground, not just or, up. Or, like you don't see, you don't player. walk down, you don't go through a hike and then see gold sticking out of the ground. Or a player crafter who's a, who's a woodsman who can actually yeah. go out, chop yeah. down trees and actually create the planks and sell them on on the market, whatever. Yeah, you know, that's a possibility too. Or they give you basically to to kind of limit this competition and farming thing you would basically have to if you want to go out and gather let's say for instance gold or valium or or wood or stone or this or that you would have to physically be, learn this ability first you have to go on a quest to learn it first so you don't get to be able to gather wood straight away this straight away that straight away you would have to go out and actually learn these abilities so let's say for instance now they have let's say 50 different uh, types of materials for people to gather it's going to take you time before you can master all 50 to gather or you have to go in a set path like say for instance now if you become a um you know you start building you become a carpenter then you can only basically chop down trees and stuff so there's ways of limiting the the right. uh, overflow on the market and the farming yeah and Josh and Chat just had a real good idea. Like, what you know, if those are a problem, perhaps you can hire miners, woodsmen, etc., to harvest the items for you. Uh, yeah. I'd I'd be fine with that. Yep. Yeah. yeah it's, just it's make a, like rare materials are really rare for them to come back. With. Yeah, it's it's a cool idea. It's almost like a Star Wars, uh, uh, yeah. little Republic idea, where you could go and send off your little dudes to go bring your crap back. Um, I don't know. I can also see it too, where players actually go out and, and mine the wood and, and that stuff, because that's like downtime. Say they only have an hour to play, they can actually go mine some wood or yep. something like that. So, yeah. You know, stuff like that for downtime type stuff, because you know that kind of leads into the um, you know building guild houses and guild halls and stuff like that. Then players can go out and actually mine stone, mine wood. Mm-hmm. You know, I could see those type of nodes. The thing I don't want to see is gold nodes, copper nodes, yep. stuff for that. Because what happens is you got your bots, you know, and if they can make the nodes where they're not bottable, then that'd be awesome. Yep. You know, it, it's yep. just other things that can, I say a mix and match would be a good idea. 
with yep. that as far as you know harvesting to be, stuff to be honest i'd even be fine with like say i take a gathering profession for mining but i could be walking around the world and all of a sudden you know almost like you know spider spidey sense or whatever you know you just kind of feel like there's gold around or whatever or iron and then you have to like use a little device to help you find it and then you just kind of dig for it you find you find some you don't you know one or the other yeah it'd be and different i think i'd kind of get bored or frustrated after a while but i'm trying to read that green name in chat <laughs> Doyton. yeah it's hard to read on my screen but uh he says he feels like nodes cause you to skip over everything and that's one of the things too yeah is nodes you know people plot maps to nodes and then they just shoot through stuff um i'd hate to see nodes be a big portion like yeah. i said i think tree wise trees and stone rocks that's that's a given that should be like you know that's notable or you just be able to mine right. it somewhere well, that's else, fine. Yeah. what else they could that's do basic is basic crap you know but when it comes like i said gold gem stuff that should be mob based drop stuff what about what about um you haven't uh you know you, you limit the nodes and everything you limit the harvesting completely and you obtain it from the major cities so you go to the major cities you get you know you have your suppliers there they have you know the the, the uh, npcs generate their materials themselves you buy it off them that basically that basically yep. goes into the economy of the city and with the with the money spent you can see the city evolve over time yeah, and it's like, a good way to get like we money get into the, the economy. Exactly, and like we get that's how we get towards the uh, guild housing and opening up shops mm -hmm. and stuff like that because you're you're basically supporting this city to advance to the next level. Yeah, I mean, I, it could I think be that'd too. be interesting. You could also do buy stone and buy wood. I mean, you could get rid of you know going out and having to mine trees mm -hmm. and stones. Yeah. I mean, if you really wanted to, you wouldn't have to do that. You could actually have NPC vendors selling the items. Yep. Know, at, a, at a fairly decent price and that's your money sink too to take a lot of the, the cash yeah. out of the the world yeah yeah so i mean and if if they do decide to go to a node system i mean that's fine that's not going to be like oh no i'm not playing it's not gonna be a game breaker but, no <laughs> no but all i can say is please 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 oh please put the nodes on like a pyramid system where there's 10 of the basic stuff, you know, there's eight of the next tier up and six and so on and so forth, so that the really rare stuff is actually really rare. Yeah. I mean, I'm so tired of seeing like, you know, just as example, we'll just say unobtainium, you know, just in the name says, just makes you think rare. So why does everyone always find it? Right. Yeah. Uh, let's go yeah, in, so. move on to the next questions. I think we kind of, uh, covered most of that um, so should crafters be able to find new crafting recipes in raids instances and general word adventuring I am all for that myself yeah me too oh yes it's, it makes sense because um, it gives it gives the crafter as well the um, I mean you're going to have people that just want to craft you're going to have people that want to do the adventuring you want, you're going to have people that don't care for the crafting but it gives the adventurer something or the crafter something else to do and it gives the adventurer if he mm -hmm. finds this recipe something to do like sell it so you know you can get some downtime and relax a bit so because crafting can can drain one the same as adventuring that's why we have these mm -hmm. multiple scenes yeah. to, to uh, twist and turn about yeah, and it should be Exactly. It should definitely and, that should definitely be a that's a given oh, yeah. basically. Yeah, and the way I see it, if me as an adventurer can walk into a dungeon and be like, Oh my god, this sword is freaking amazing, holy crap. Why would you ever deny the same for a crafter? Where you can be like, That recipe is like I must have it. You yeah. know? And it gives them a reason to go adventuring, you know, and mm -hmm. actually go fight with a group to get yep. that, you know, that recipe. So it makes some rare crafting recipes. Oh yeah, heck yeah. Definitely a good idea. Put them on a raid mob here and there, you know, cool yep. dark dungeon, something, you know. It kind of it kind of brings it kind of you can brings even in have it at the end of a dungeon, laying on a table. It's yep. like it's, it brings the ideas that we had, like saying, for instance, now if you go into this raid zone and we, we fight this last boss monster, now he has a rare chance to drop a recipe of his armor. I mean, think of the possibilities there. Going out to raid, and this this monster now has a one percent chance that he could drop. His armor that looks absolutely awesome that you as a dire lord or a crusade or whatever could wear or depending on what kind of class that monster is that you're going to raid off. I mean that would make it really interesting and people would be oh, going yeah. mad think, for that. 
Yes, I, th I think that'd be awesome. Just, you know, um, having like 1% drop rates on certain specific badass gear. That would be cool, too. Yep. Oh, and, yeah. And, 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 if we, we fight a boss that got some crazy black spiky armor and a crafter oh, yeah. gets that recipe, name your price. Yep. I'll find a way to get you that money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, that's the thing. And um, going on with it, too, I mean, if you do it that way, some of those rare pieces like that, that also doesn't take away from the crafters in the game, too, where they can actually craft some decent gear you know, for players to wear and fight with in the game. But when they go on a raid, they can actually get a nice, cool, awesome piece. Mm -hmm. But it's like that 1%, you know, type drop. So I think the loot tables, as far as, you know, that concern on a raid mob should be kind of, you know, kind of challenging. But allow players to really craft some really wicked gear yeah. that actually is raid worthy or entry raid yeah. level gear. You know? Yeah. So, and I think that'll keep a happy medium for all crafters. Like we were talking oh, yeah. about. Make yeah. it so crafters, uh, crafters can participate in modifying a piece of gear. Yeah. I mean, if it has to be socketed 20 times to make players feel important and you can be able to, you know, socket that gear and make it badass, then by mm -hmm. all means do that. Oh, yeah. I think I the mean, biggest problem that almost every MMO has had to date, kind of almost with, well, at first, not, not, uh, EverQuest wasn't the exception at first, but it, it I mean, it's the same as everyone now. Um, crafting ends up becoming something on the sidelines you use mm -hmm. to get better gear, to drop. Yeah. Or, so or that, that's a, all it's for. Or a time right, we'll, sink for some people. Yeah, we'll take um, World of Warcraft. I was a blacksmith. The only reason I took blacksmith is so I could socket my gear, so that I could put gems in it, so that I could get into a raid and get better gear. Yeah. So right there makes you feel like as as as, craft, as a crafter, I'm not important because all I get to do is this one little thing. Make crafters relevant, and I'm saying this as a guy who doesn't craft much. Yep. Make please make them relevant. Make so that I don't have to adventure for all of my gear. I don't care if you make like the number one, uh, the best gauntlet for a tank is craftable. Because chances are the boots are droppable. Yeah, because I think, you know, going on that line, I mean, when people start special, specializing in their form of trade, they're going to have some awesome, like, gem sockets, you know, like a, the jeweler, for instance, can put this, like, plus 40 freaking fire resistance gem. You can buy that from that dude. He's important. So yeah. what he's created is important to all players and himself because he can actually modify his gear. So everybody has an important part. Like you got to wait for the that the, uh, tailor to build an actual nice, awesome leather chest piece, you know, a socketed chest piece, and then you know you can sit there and modify these things. I mean, this is yeah. what's going to make everybody important it's... in the crafting system. Because you know, it's like like you guys have been talking now. Um, you know, it's got so stupid, but. These are really cool ideas because, like you guys have said, it makes the crafters actually contribute to your adventuring as well. I mean, it's like the idea we had off the screen of having, like, for instance, the tailor build like a leather, you know, a basic leather padding uniform that you could basically put underneath your plate armor that gives you, depending on what tier, what level, what skill he's got, gives you plus five mitigation or pl plus five this, so you get an extra small little bonus depending on what you're wearing underneath your breastplate. Or now, there was there was a not so popular MMO that I played with my wife probably seven years ago now that had something similar to that. You had your full set of armor, but you could get uh, armor padding, and you just right click, apply it to your chest plate, we'll say, and then it basically has a little note bomb that says, you know, it's padded with whatever, and it gave it these extra stats. Yep. You had to go to a tailor to get that padding. Yes. And then that, that and was that, awesome. That, I loved it. And then you take it. Tailor important. And then yeah. you can basically do the same thing that we said at the beginning. You could take that piece, then you can go to the blacksmith, he can add that. You can go to the jeweler, he can add that. So the, the tailor is basically the guy who makes the ground recept out. He makes the, 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 the basic padding. And then, if you want to go and make something special out of that, you take it to your jeweler or to your 
whatever, and he adds to it. So plus five poison or plus this and that. So you've got a nice little basic set underneath, and it makes everybody important still. Yeah. The tail is important because he's the only guy who can make that stuff, but all the other ones can add to it. Mm -hmm. yep, oh yeah, can add to it. Yeah, as a tank, as a tank of twenty years, well, eighteen, I should say. I can tell you that if every craft or every trade skill profession has something they can do to my armor, I will find them. Yeah, and I will pay them to do it because that's just the kind of guy I am. I'm the tank. I need to be at my best at all times. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's like this one in a million chance to find the guy every day. I will shout for that guy. Yeah. Try and find him. It might take me a week. It might take me three. I might never find him, but I'm still going to try. Exactly. And see, and if I think if they if they do it this way, okay, make players the crafters, and they allow them to build the gear, you're, and they can spend less time building all these random helmets and random this that drop off of mobs, you know, a crap ton of different mm -hmm. weird statted items players can actually build a lot of that stuff they just make a few of those mobs drop some trashy crap that's fine but they don't have to spend weeks and months on end coding 45 or a thousand different helmets they mm -hmm. can actually only do 50 but let players craft variations of helmets yeah. plus 20 mm -hmm. fire plus 20 to magic you know plus 10 to strength i mean you can make you know, allow the players to sit here and play with the stats on the, a lot of this gear. You know, and, and what's the cool about the atmosphere system is that you can give these crafters the ability to build specific gear for cold, the heat elements, the mm. desert, you know, nope. all that stuff. It makes so that it makes sense. Make it more interesting. It, it makes sense. Right. That it way. makes absolute sense because there's nothing more annoying to a crafter is realizing after a while, after they've patched it, I'm you're worthless. useless. <laughs> My stuff that I've crafted is useless. I've crafted now the lowest level tier one kit for adventurers to go out, but he's not going to wear it because the first dungeon drops awesome stuff anyway, and that's an easy dungeon to go through. So why is he going to go and buy my stuff? Make it so that, like you said, less items in the world obviously still have you know unique sets and this that and unique yes. pieces but not as, in, not as cool if you if you want to go out and start off in the game you start tier one tier two etc mm -hmm. have it done by a craft you have to go to the crafters and get your kit that because make them important crafters will set you up boom obviously at the beginning they can't do it like that because you've got to learn the recipes this that and the other so you start off with a basic tier kit that like you can get out but as soon as you reach let's say mid-level it goes towards the crafting crafting becomes really important right yeah or or your zones your zone mobs mm -hmm. drop randomly trashy gear that'll get you through for a little while yeah. until you can make your way to player crafted stuff or player crafted right. stuff actually starts making it onto the market yeah, yeah. you know because yeah, so there's, my... always, there's always going to be somebody out there who's going to be man devoting their time to the crafting where they're going to start shelling out some really good stuff so it's going to be available. You just got to go find money to go buy the bits and pieces. You know. Mm -hmm. See, <laughs> so. Now, my my idea of crafting heaven is basically like, okay, you go on a raid, you drop, you know, super badass helmet. Okay? You manage to win it. It's okay. You can take that to a crafter, and then he can change it into something that's really good for you. Because mm. there, that makes crafters viable at endgame, very important. And you can just say he drops this helmet, which is all right, but it's a component to crafting. Yeah. But, like, say I'm a crafter. I bring up, I bring up my little window here. I basically say what piece I want to kind of build, you know, gauntlets, helm, chest piece. I can either pick, you know, maybe specific stats, and it costs more for more stats, or maybe a set of stats where it just gives you a big bundle of stats for the item, and here's the cost for that. If you want to add sockets or whatnot, and then you can add all these different styles to it. They, it could be a winged helm, it could be a horned helm, it can just be just a standard knight helmet, or who knows, it could be a freaking big round one for all I care. They did, they did that just, in, hmm? in uh, EverQuest 2, they had a similar system at the very end. 
It wasn't done by crafters though, that was the uh, that was the letdown. You could basically take an armor piece that dropped out of a dungeon that had its certain specs on it. Let's say for right. instance now I'm a druid and for me wisdom and uh, cast speed and crit, crit is very important but on this item is now instead of a crit bonus there's a crit chance on there but I want to up my bonus. I could go to this NPC and say right I want you to take 50% of that crit uh, bonus and turn that into crit chance boom and it would give me a certain amount of crit chance so I'd, it would deduct the crit bonus but it would add the crit chance as well at the same time so you could modify right. it but this should be Something something like that, that crafters should crafter do crafters should be the hmm. ones that take your armor apart depending on their class if they can do yeah. it so obviously not every crafter can do stuff oh. like that it would have to be split up for instance yeah. everything that's you know magic like like uh crits and stuff like that that should be somebody that like an alchemist should do yeah mm -hmm. everything that's oh, mitigation yeah. and everything like that that's something that your you know your blacksmith would do and and that's how you kind of split mm -hmm. it up so if you depending on right. what you want to do you have to go to certain craft to get it done yeah absolutely um royal wolf was saying uh his question was, should these skills like crafting, cooking, and tailoring, should they just be click a button or make it more involved? It, well, we're, we're basically saying how we like to see it work, but definitely it's got to be a little bit more involved. You can't just, you know, crap out a breastplate and be done with a click of a button. No, you actually have to gather up the iron bars. You have to gather this. You have to gather that. Whatever you need to do, uh, get your coal, whatever. Go to the your crafting station or your little, get over your, or your anvil. And you got to go and actually create the breastplate. And yeah, I'd like to see, uh, you know, maybe plug in some extra stuff in the experiment to see whether you can get like a cooler stat on the breastplate mm -hmm. before you sell it on the market. That would be cool because there's your stat on the breastplate. Now it's on the market. Joe Blow Schmuckatelli comes along and buys it. Now he's augmented with a, a gem. He's augmenting it with uh, an alchemy potion, which now gives it plus five to poison. Um, he goes to an enchanter type trade, whatever it is. Then he can enchant it with like plus five to cold and plus ten yeah. to magic, whatever it is. Make it to where players can do that, because that's ultimately what will make crafting important to everybody. Yep, definitely. So let's go and read off another question anyway, because um, we have quite a few. Right, should crafters be able to upgrade their equipment, stove, anvil over time, the more experienced they become? That comes back to, to the question that we just had. Um, definitely. You should, depending on your your experience, because I don't want to see you go and click through, you know, like your typical crafting window, you have your crafting window, you click, and it goes through level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4, boom, you're done. I want to see a lot more happen before you actually end up having a finished product. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you start off with, basically, you take you take your iron bars, you melt them down because you want to make a iron breastplate, so they have to be melted down. You've, you've now got this physical, you know, this uh, liquid form. Now you put it into a form. You form the breastplate. Then you go one further. You start adding, you know, you start marking it, making it hard, you harden it and everything. So it's like one, two, three, maybe four different steps before you actually make the final product. Instead of going click and sitting there, mm -hmm. being bored, pressing click every two seconds because you're finished with that piece. It should go through different levels. And while you're doing that, you skill your level as well. Yeah, so you don't, you level. don't just, you know, level up like, like you do normally in every other game and crafting you actually have to skill yourself so once you've reached a certain level of skill you can learn the awesome stuff you find a recipe that's you know level 10 or whatever but you can't do that yet because you haven't got the skill points mm -hmm. and that's where we were talking about too is once you get to your your trade skills come to a point and now it's going to ask you you want to continue in blacksmithing choose yes or no or do you want to continue working in jewel craft and all that and then make your ultimate decision so you could build all your skills up with generics and the baseline now you got to specialize and once you specialize you're stuck in that that's it yep. you can't go back well, yep. yeah, but that gives everybody a chance to see what's going on out there well let's let's get back onto the uh, actual question though 
upgrading your stove, anvil, etc. Definitely, you should be able to yes. upgrade this stuff. Um, and and depending on what level that thing is, it open that that could also open up other possibilities for you to make special stuff, add to it, uh, or mm -hmm. or you know craft the stuff a bit faster or make it a bit better. Get you you know a, a special ability put onto it because it's you know high level. Mm -hmm. uh, they they should kind of I think that's kind of interesting an interesting approach yeah. to go you can upgrade it i i would definitely like to see different tiers of your tools or your stations and yeah. have recipes require a certain tier yeah because like a tier one anvil it's good enough to you know beat some some uh, iron on but you get like some adamantium and all of a sudden you're pounding on this bar of adamantium on your little tiny <laughs> anvil and it's putting dents in the anvil no, so you're yeah. gonna have to need a better one. Yeah. Or like you were saying, maybe the reason you want to get the better ones is simply because at near the end game, crafting takes a long freaking time. So yeah. there, these other anvils will speed it up, make the process faster, or it's like you know one in a hundred chance that yeah, oh you finished also... making this breastplate and now it's got plus one crit on it. Yeah. It'll also it'll also break up I think the speed too of crafters like. The more time you put into your stuff, the better your stuff's going to be. Yep. So mm -hmm. uh, this blacksmith, for instance, he's dragging butt. He's not investing a lot of time, so he's going to be behind. But if you're, like, super involved in your craft, you know, you're going to speed ahead because you're working toward that tier. Yep. So this guy, he's a little behind. So it, it'll break up your crafters, too, because a lot of people, everybody's going to be able to be on the same part. Not necessarily, because some folks might not spend a ton of time crafting mm -hmm. so it's going to break up your your crafter skill levels over over the uh, long run so oh yeah and you know what definitely. with your high tier stove or your anvil or whatnot that'll, that'll put you even ahead yep. yeah you could you could use that as an excuse to do an epic quest for crafters mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. bingo just you because i'm special. an adventurer why do i have an epic Get quest the golden and, anvil yeah, yeah and tom next to me who only loves to craft, he loves to create, why doesn't he get an epic quest? Why, didn't, why can't we both have one? Yep, like, it's like like I said at the end, if you become like, let's say now, you, you've now maxed out your crafting, you can now go out on a quest for it, like, like I said, and you go out on this quest, and when you come back, or, or basically you, you, get, you now get to interact with the city and become a city crafter. So it's not something you can do from the start. It's something you have to earn. Yeah, it's almost like a you want to earn. It's like a faction, basically. You have to earn that faction to craft for this city. But when you do, by God, materials, etc., that you buy, components that you need for crafting are going to be way be cheaper. Reduced in prices. Reduced yeah. in prices. So it's something that's going to tickle your nerve because you, you know, you know, once you get there, you're special. You are the city. Yeah. You know, you get a title. You're city crafter. So yep. you can take on certain jobs only that only a city crafter can take on. You know, yeah. you be, you become maybe, maybe really you get, cool. Maybe when you get that to that point where you're a city crafter, now all of a sudden the, you can go to a certain NPC in town that will go and get materials for you. Yep, or that. Yeah. Or you can open up a chop. The bonus, a plus. Now you got little, uh, kind of like little slave labor to go out and harvest the crap for yep. you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, open up shops, for instance, as well. You get now, you now get to open up your own shop for your stuff inside the city. That gives you mm -hmm. better discounts on the market or whatever kind of thing. You know, it's it's, it's things like this that it's not technically something you must have, but it's things like this that keep you engaged and keep you happy and occupied for actually going and putting in the work into crafting. There's nothing worse than crafting your ass off, reaching max level, they change the core game, they do an update, and they, they make you completely useless. useless. You, you get so frustrated. Useless. I used to look at my warrior in EverQuest, or not EverQuest, in, uh, in World of Warcraft, look at my maxed out blacks or armor smithing or whatnot, and I was like, wow, that was like a waste of 80 hours. I could have done anything else with my time and, and better off. Yeah. Right. Exactly. I'm going to so, go. Yeah, th go on then, I'd Dal. say Pantheon. I hope Pantheon would, will, you know, maybe plant something like this. I think it would be a great way for crafters, and it will keep crafting um, important to the game because a lot of MMOs have gone away from it, and mm -hmm. it's all about blowing through content, you know. Make crafters yeah. important. Give Bring crafting back to an important part of the game, an integral part of the game. Yeah. Despite what people people 
believe adventurers versus crafters it's an even 50 50 split yep definitely oh, yeah, it because is. because today definitely. i'm an adventurer tomorrow i might feel like i want to craft so exactly. i count for both yep. even though how many games have i crafted in maybe three you know yeah. but i still consider myself that if the crafting is good i am going to craft right. on both. why would you ever ignore 50 percent of your player base mm, no right some and that's what a lot of people are doing. doing that. That's why most people like us, we're not playing a game with much enthusiasm right now because they're not mm. worth it. Yep. They're not worth it anymore. It's just they're, they lack the fun, the interest. Yeah, uh, they just say, here's your grind to max level. Yep. Give us as much money as you as and? we can get from you before you hit max level and then move on. Yep. Well, I'm going to go and read off some questions now because this is basically what we can connect together. This now concerns mm -hmm. guilds, and I really want to get into this because this is going to be really interesting. Right, uh, each crafter can contribute to a piece. No, no, not that one. Uh, that's later. Right. Um, basically, let's start off. Should crafters be able to create guild-specific stuff um, like guild emblem, embossed armor, guild practice dummies? <laughs> and the next one: Can crafters take part in creating guild buildings from the ground up? And then we go into my thoughts as well. Claimable land within the city or just outside. Building a guild house will take all crafters combined. It should take weeks to obtain all that is needed. It should be very costly to obtain land so that it stays special. So thoughts mm -hmm. on that round package of gilding. Um, well, go on the then. one thing I'll say is I would like to see architect be a craft. Be, make that a yeah. trade skill. A second. That yeah, could be. A, that could be a second. You know, one of those second abilities yeah. that you could do. Yeah, Where all you ability, do is yeah. you build the building blocks to build stuff. Yeah, there's a, a Age of Conan. I played that for a little while, and you had to convert um, rocks, stones, and all that, and you had to build the different tier levels for the walls and stuff. Mm -hmm. So you actually had to collect the different uh, things, but then you had to have an architect to actually assemble the pieces and the joints to create the plates and all that crap to actually build the you know the walls and stuff next yeah that i mean was a craftable skill yeah. i think it's pretty obvious the guild that we're going to be in if we get someone who's an architect that just wants to build homes and the guild hall and all that stuff i'm just gonna be like what do you need today i have only got like an hour to play so I can't really do a lot mm -hmm. but i'll go out and get your get your materials that's let all me, i'll do today let me quickly just jump in and answer one quick question uh, from from Dighton. What about when you turn in your craft at max level for a new one? Maybe you could get a crafting bonus. Um, basically, that's already been kind of touched and explained by by VR with the with the progeny system. When you turn in your progeny, you can take over certain abilities that your main your your first character had, and it should technically it should stay like that if they keep the progeny system in it should only be done when you do that it shouldn't be something that you could do when you you know create a new character or anything like that it should only be done by the progeny system all right carry on then by the, by the way i'm trying to record as many player or, or viewer questions as i can awesome. we have time, okay. we'll yeah so um, um go on down yeah i think uh that'll be interesting I mean, it would be really cool to have, like, let's say, for instance, now you're in the major city, and instead of having your typical guild housing or your or your, your normal housing instance and everything, you could have like a massive city with with spaces of land, and because crafters contribute towards the city, sell stuff to the merchants and everything, they can expand their city. So you have like mm -hmm. instead of so when you walk down down the main street main area you're not just gonna go and turn left to go into the housing part you can it'll be everywhere you have plots of land that you can buy that you could claim i'm sure it can be done especially in the unity engine as well i'm sure there's a possibility to like mark out or you know reserve oh, yeah. this piece of land and say like this is now the building land for you know the voice of terminus guild or whatever Mm -hmm. And it's going to take a lot of time, a lot of materials. It's going to cost a shit ton of money to to actually be able to buy this land and obtain it and everything. But it should be something also that every crafter has to contribute to. So it's not just you go out as a guild, you buy a piece of land, and boom, you're there. Doom. That's it. Okay. You, you're done. Go on down. Okay, the, only, the only thing I want to touch on that too is if if you're allowed to build like these guild halls or guild cities, um, then that's where. 
players can actually advance their trade skill, their craft skill, where they can put down the golden anvil. Yep. They can put down the, the golden uh, forge. That's a place where you can put those things so they can actually go there and go back to that. Because just having a guild city to meet up or a guild hall is kind of, sometimes it's just kind of, yeah. You know, got to make it important to be an integral part of the game to, for a reason to have it and, and invest all that time yep. into Because if you invest all that time and you build this hall, it's like, okay, we got this hall, look at us, woohoo. I mean, but it doesn't you do could, anything. You could add, you could add, for instance, like, you know, the vesting. When you normally, normally in a game, when you vest in the city, you get, you get that uh, bonus back quicker. Right, now you take the guild hall that you've built, and if your players actually log out in your guild hall and vest in there, they get an extra bonus towards that as well for the for vesting within yeah, the guild so hall. I'm saying, yeah, so what I'm saying is guild halls better have some sort of bonuses and yep. you know perks yeah. to have. Otherwise, it's just a waste of time building them. Yeah, it's just Definitely basically a huge perks. money sink that you don't really need. And they yep. should. And it, and what I really don't want to see is basically everybody, every guild, no matter how big, can get the biggest guild hall no it should be limited to the amount yeah. of players you have the activity the amount of time you put into it so if we're like a three-man guild we ain't gonna own that freaking massive guild hall that looks absolutely <laughs> amazing it, it's funny it's funny he says that because i spent a year and a half to almost two years me and my wife and a buddy of mine actually built <laughs> a tier three uh, keep in Age of Conan, <laughs> <laughs> collecting all the materials ourselves. Oh my God, it took fucking forever. I mean, there should there should Crazy. be there should be limitations. <laughs> I don't care how I, it's it's harsh. I know because there's a lot of people who put the time in there. But if you're only a two man guild, you know the, the guild hall should be special towards the guilds that actually are active, are big, and everything. So the bigger the guild, the more active the guild, the better the reward mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Yeah. So like you couldn't go from tier one to tier two until you have ten members. And you exactly. Can't go from tier two exactly. To tier three until you got twenty. Not actual numbers, yeah. but just random. Yeah. Yeah. You can upgrade. I mean, that would make perfect sense to me. That works. Because it gives yeah, um, it, it gives it gives the guild as well a kind of um, urge to actually go out and try and find people, and it, it kind of, that would give you as a guild as well the interaction that most guilds miss nowadays because nowadays all it is is you know i'm joining a guild for the sake of actually being able to talk to people right away but necessarily i'm not i might not necessarily you know be friends with them or do a lot of stuff with them but this would give you a reason as a guild to actually you know as guild leaders as well and to make yeah. sure your <laughs> members are active and contribute towards the guild to make it bigger to make it better because there's benefits out there that are going to be so awesome bigger guild hall better resting time this that and the other and hey this guild hall looks also really epic and cool and not everybody can achieve it so cool yeah, I don't think there's much more to add to that yep pretty but, much nail on the head um but let's get let's go and break it down though you know guild, guild specific stuff building we said yes to that right we did touch on yeah. that right another one that's going to be interesting to bring up is um what about the thought of let me try and find it bringing in a trade where we talked about this i think last time off, I think it was off the stream, I'm not quite sure. Where you have a trade where you can actually tame or breed mounts. Hmm. I think we like touched an, on it last time, yeah, just we very briefly. It, yeah. Yeah. Like an equestrian uh, type skill where you can actually tame mounts, yeah. Yeah, equestrian yeah. skill. And then give, and then basically you have certain crafters like the, like the blacksmith. Let's say for example the armor smith, he can now make hooves that give you plus 15 run speed on that mount or plus 5 depending on which mm -hmm. ones you buy the uh, tailor can now make a padding for that horse that gives that horse now a beneficial bonus for you know resisting cold or, or stuff like that or basically giving it a mitigation bonus for you when you sit on that horse mm -hmm. go, to a, go to a leather worker and he can make your saddlebags yep yeah, stuff like that as well. So an additional yeah. saddlebags and for that. So you got like a, a pony. To, the ability to breed mounts actually opens inventory. up. Uh, I had a 
pretty in-depth discussion with my wife, but this is also an avid gamer. Like her thought behind it was, she's not sure there's a whole lot you can do with a breeding one because it's not like you're going to mix a horse with a lion and then make <laughs> yeah. some crazy yeah. thing, right? Man. You know, you start mixing and matching, all of a sudden he gets uh, a horse looking thing, looks and he goes, "Kill me!" Yeah. You get, you get but, a horse um, lion that actually eats mobs for lunch <laughs> instead of grass. Yeah, but I mean, what you could do is you basically take your your mounts as your crafting material by a species. You can yeah. breed horses together. If one, if both of them are very fast, then the offspring's most likely going to be super fast, exceptionally fast. Yeah. If you know one's got if both of them have more hit points or whatnot, it's going to be like mix and match those two together in a way, but not. You're gonna lose a little bit I've, in the end overall. I've got the ultimate the ultimate advancement for that at max level. The special Draft ultimate horse. the ultimate special that can be obtained. Obviously it can Draft take a very long time to do. You can then breed yourself a pack pony. <laughs> yeah. No, that should be an equestrian thing, I think. Equestrian, yeah. Do, do an well, I mean, that, would, that would be something I would definitely go to a breeder to get, like give me a pack pony. Yeah. I think. Or a mule. Start yeah. out with a pack mule, but get I mean, a pack pony, then into a yeah. pack stallion. Yep. And even when you don't even consider like merging pack stats of two different horses, we'll just use horses as the example. Um, you could breed them together to see what kind of patterns you get out, or what coloring you get, you mm -hmm. know? So there's there's really a lot that you can do, and plus you can get materials from other crafters, blacksmiths, miners, whatever, to make ornaments on them. You know, you can make some crazy frilly done a skirt for them, or you can put like some crazy thing for their their mane, some stuff on their tail, whatever. Yeah. I mean, there's lots that you can do with it. Yeah. Quick question to bring into you guys before we uh, kind of shut off of that: Do you feel guild hall should be instanced or not? Me personally, I think it should be split. For instance, now like uh, resting within the guild hall and everything should be instance. It should be only something that the guild could have. But let's say, for instance, now the normal area for meeting and greeting and and you know crafting and stuff, you could you if you want as a guild, you can make that instance or you can make uh, it open to the public. I'm I I'm kind of mixed. I'm kind of like actually I like to see the guild halls kind of like out in the open, kind of in the city, mm -hmm. where players can actually. They can be invited, like you invite them as a guest, give them permission to come in, you know, be a yep. guest of your guild hall. Um, say, for instance, you have some players who are interested in your guild, they can actually come uh, tour your guild hall, um, you know, look at the awesomeness that you guys collected. And it'd be cool even too if the devs could put in like trophies or banners of the different raids you've completed, and those banners actually hang in your hall. So then people can go, oh wow, you guys raided, you know, whatever at Dorn's mm -hmm. Deep or whatever. You got that flag, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Just you know, some guilt, you know, it's, you know, the the cosmetic stuff that may you know shows you off that your guilt's, you know, right. That's and cool. Yeah. yeah. If, we have horse they, lions. Well, I could see why they would do instance because it's just easier on the world. I mean, there's less stuff that people have to load. There's less stuff, less stuff they have to worry about in terms of collisions and all this other extra coding. Yeah. But I could see that would be why they do instancing, just to make it easier on them. I'd, yeah, I'd yeah. be fine with that. Yeah, that's, that's I would cool like too. to see them in the world, but then you come into the problem of land has to be a very limited and very valuable resource. So, they say there's 10 slots, okay? To buy one, it's 100 gold. Well, yeah. now buys, a, buys one of the plots. Now, all of a sudden, the cost is 200 gold for a plot. No, your Yarnella buys one now, all of a sudden it's 300 to buy a plot. Because it's there's less land available, so it's more valuable. True. I mean, it's, yeah, either or. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's basically animal husbandry, Battle is what we were talking speed. about. Um, oh. I'm trying to have a look, see what else we have Battle here. Lion. Horse lion. Cow lion. Sorry, I'm just having fun thinking that this is a horse lion's eating meat off the battlefield. Uh, a horse, the horse having a mane around its neck instead of just at the I back. Know, right. <laughs> yeah, with fangs. A horse with fangs. I'm top, 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 eating people. Um, who was it? Somebody asked about a shirt. Yeah, we're gonna have the VOT store coming soon, yep, folks. Yep. This is a cool stuff. I, this is this is a special design only for the guild. So. Uh, 
this is our guild shirt, but uh, Dal's in the process of setting up our store. So yeah, there's a store we don't want to, you know, kind of market what ourselves like, but since it's been brought up, we've got some yeah. stuff coming up we thought would be yeah. pretty cool to do. Yeah. We so, um, you guys can now. Uh, you, you still got time down? Hmm? You still got time or. Yeah, I got. Yeah, I got about another. 30 minutes I can do because I can put All right, my so we're, we're gonna let's go in there uh, give the guys five minutes to throw up some questions here ideas and everything oh, I've, got, I've got quite a few of them already all right then <laughs> go on then we'll, we'll, we'll go then, through them crafting locations inside of dungeons where certain things can be crafted only at like a certain spot well like, for instance for instance using EverQuest lore we'll say Nagafin has a super crazy forge you would have to be able to forge a certain item. The only way you can do that is by going through him and add to his forge to craft it. Well, that kind of comes. That kind of comes. That comes that questing. Yeah, that comes back idea. to that to that raiding idea as well. So let's say yeah. for instance now that monster drops now the uh, raid gear, but that raid gear can only be done in a special forge. You've got the recipe for it, but you've got to go to a special forge to actually go and actually at obtain these things. I mean, it's been done in multiple games. Um, EverQuest 2's done it. Uh, I think EverQuest has done it. You've had, you mm -hmm. know, certain special forges where you had to go. I mean, I remember back in EverQuest 2, you had to go down in Lava Storm to go and forge the special Lava Storm gear, or you had to go to Valos Sec in into Sec to, to forge the Sec gear. And yeah. it's it's been uh, done, be cool. and it should be yeah. done. Yeah, it should be, definitely. I, I like that kind yep. of that idea. It's a quest. Yeah, it goes along the side the, the, the side lines of a quest, epic quest, um, kind of a mm. sort of theme. Yeah. yeah, it's like extra work to get this very specific type of gear, which the makes it anvil. not necessarily epic, but it makes it more entertaining just to get it done. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it'd be interesting. Yeah, I mean, if I go to a crap and say I need this like inferno short sword. Well, you're gonna have to take me to Lava Storm so that I can craft it. <laughs> and I just wanna quickly bring in a few notes towards this show and then Dal can do the disclaimer real quick and then we'll go get on with the next question. All the questions that we have here that don't technically get answered in this show, they will be answered. Um, because this is going to be a multi-part series because there's so much to talk about on crafting especially when they start releasing info on crafting that's when we're going to have a lot more to do so if stuff, stuff doesn't get answered right now on this show Lex has uh, marked down some questions and we will we will bring them up when we do the next show and um, Dal, bring up the disclaimer please Ladies and gentlemen, your first disclaimer is the fact that is we are just making crap up and speaking about crap and ideas that we like to do for uh, Pantheon. However, uh, none of this is Pantheon orientated. Yes, we have been mistaken for developers in the past, but uh, you know, obviously, know now if some of you have been following us, they were not developers. But the developers do watch our show and they do take in some of our ideas and they mull it over in their heads. So, please uh, always come here, ask questions, answer questions, whatever. Uh, this is just all speculation about the game so we'll keep you informed but also you know if you follow us before we had a, a community manager on uh, Kilson and we were planning on having future uh, developers actually come on our show so always stay tuned because you never know when it's coming because sometimes we don't know when they're coming yep alright then yep. Go on. Yeah, the next one should we have crafted by tags on gear yeah, yeah, cool. of course. I mean, it gives people a mark, you know, like it makes them feel special. You know, like we always said in the very beginning of our first shows is MMOs have gotten away from making the player character, the player feel special and mm -hmm. make their character feel important to the game. So making a crafter important, putting their name on their gear, yep. that's that's important because somebody might say, hey, where can I get that? And be like, well, this dude crafted it. So they can actually yep. look for that person by name and that person I've actually done famous. just that. Mm, I have seen so. someone link it in chat and it said crafted by and I go to find a notepad I write it down like when I see him online I'm gonna get it yep. <laughs> next one okay our next one tiered crafting should it be done through tiers or just a straight skill um what was I that again that should crafting go up in tier in terms of tiers tier one to this or whatever or should it just be this is your your skill level see what you can make um, I, should, I think it should be individual player uh, level, basically, in a sense. Like, 
like EverQuest one, you had to continue to work in that, and once you made it, bam, mm -hmm. you hit a point exactly. that says, "Hey, you level, you hit level 100." Bam, you hit level 150. Bam, level 200. So I think it should be player individual tiers. And the more you put into it, the more tier you make, the better I, off you get. I would like to advance that one instead of going player tier. You should go. They should break. They should break down the trade skill in general. So let's take let's take blacksmithing. And now they break it down into different tiers itself. So you have like plate armor, you have you know forging, you have um, melting, you have this, you have that. So the individual parts to to actually craft that, you would have to skill them yourself to a certain point to actually further yourself along. So it makes you it makes it a lot harder. It makes it more. It makes you get more involved into it instead of just you know leveling up to you know skill 100 now you've reached that you can now do this you will have to actually individually level up all the different things and that basically depending on what skill you get opens up mm. multiple opportunities as well for that part that's how yes. i think they should do it yeah i'd agree with that one yeah um cool. let's see so and now if items have we'll just call them augment slots yeah well, augments or whatever you yeah. know is a higher skill should a higher skill equal more augmentation slots? Mm. Mm. That's a little iffy even for me, because there is a point where you get to the you get so many augmentation slots or bandwidth or whatever you want to call it to the point where that you completely overpower this piece of gear. I'd say I think, I'd say keep I'd say it yes, but only if I cap it at a certain point. Um, Early on, I, I would say how it's how it how it caps out is like you can only put one type of augment in. So for instance, you can only put one magic mm -hmm. uh, augment. You can only put one um, for a warm climate, say a warm climate augment in. You can only put you know a plus magic with this augment. You can only put one. You can't put like two fire augments. Say two plus uh, twenty fire gems. You can't put in that same piece of armor, but you could put it on another piece of armor. Yeah, so you can't double up a piece. I'd, so I'd, yeah, keep it balanced that way. I'd have to right. give that some thought because I'm looking at it now from the complete different perspective of actually having the armor and everything be you know stuff that players create actually be valuable. So I'm gonna have to pass on this one at this point in time. I might you know we might bring it up later at some other point. I can't really give my input to that because. It's hey. it's a bit iffy. It's, it's it's. I want plus one hundred fire, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When I'm going up against a dragon, I want plus one hundred fire. Now, if I could plus two hundred, that would be cheating because if I could put two fire augments in each piece of gear, that's plus two hundred. Right. My next uh, question. Or, or needless to say that, like for me, my idea was if a, if a if an iron breastplate only takes a skill of ten to create. Well, that's to create without augment slots. You get up to skill level 15, there's one augment slot, and you get up mm. to or, 30, then there's or, two. Or, or but the then, you get, then from that point on, this item can only have two slots in it. Or, or you can only put this uh, level 10 augment in this piece of gear. Right. But level 10 can go into level 100 piece of gear. Yeah, so basically, so basically uh, class level class-specific, tier-specific kind of... Uh, way of doing it like, like they augment, like yeah, they yes. did in, like they did in terror basically you had you had actually classification on your armor so you had a classification armor set of 264 and instead of having like 64 you had 264 where you could do everything underneath that you could put into it but if you were only 64 with that armor class boom you can't put that augment in because it's 264 dude but, but psst, if you get the one percent armor drop from the Dragon of Hell, <laughs> you get to put any type of augment you want in that gear, because then you're a super badass. <laughs> Very nice. And that's when you get to ride the horse lion too. <laughs> the horse lion. Hey, another one. An, an alternative form of getting recipes through experimenting or reverse engineering of items. That's that's tricky because that kind of um, 
brings down like, the would make sense. It, it, it would make sense but how are you going to how are the devs going to actually balance that out and actually make it so like let's say for instance now this piece of armor drops and now you take it to the, your, your crafting table and you try and break it down dismantling it and grabbing certain attributes off of it to use yes okay but to actually try and recreate um, this is going to be tricky well, that's the thing. My idea, even from a th programmer's point of view, is if I've got a like you know super crazy breastplate, as a blacksmith, I should be able to take this apart to learn how it was made, so that I can know have a chance to figure out exactly how it or, was made. Or, or, but or, it needs to be could... you know Sorry. A, a very Inside. small percentage to actually work, because it's going to destroy the item. Hmm. But the rewards are just amazing. Hmm. Mm. That's where I wanted to go with that too. Is the idea of right. that you go to the alchemist, you pour on the acid of fire dragon or some crap, whatever. <laughs> it melts the fire breastplate. It, it, it melts the breastplate, but guess what? You just learned golden anvil out of that melting that suck. Mm. You got a piece of the puzzle. Yep. Yeah, you got the golden bowl. I mean, yeah, I mean, oh. experimenting with it's fine. I mean, doing stuff like that, but trying to recreate is going to be kind of tricky. But experimentation, definitely, they have that in quite a few games. Experimenting, you can experiment. But, but what should happen though, as well, it should be able to screw up as well and go completely yes. tits up. So you could actually, you know, end up destroying that piece and it disappears, and now that it's gone cool. back to the fiery dragon. Or, or you could dump the uh, acid potion from the alchemist onto the breastplate and it melts and comes up with a shirt that says Voices of Terminus. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That would be oh, so yeah, cool if the, I'm, if the developers I'm did that and crap of peasants, and pea seeds. Never smack a dolphin in the face. <laughs> I'm a fan of both ex uh, the experimentation, like just throw a bunch of stuff in and just see what happens. Mix maybe it up, nothing yeah. happens. Yeah, maybe you know? something doesn't happen or you... Or you create the owl emblem of fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I also or, think or that reverse ragging. engineering does have a good place because you are oh. basically saying, I'm taking an orc's breastplate that's very, very durable. I should be able to take that apart to figure out how he made it. Yeah, but, that's kind of cool. I, I don't mind that. You yes. want to get some of the stuff bit. One thing that just went boop in my head, what we never talked about, which I'm really excited boop. to talk about, what I'm really, really, really boop. excited to talk about. Dying your armor. Yes. What? Dying your armor, changing color of the armor should definitely be brought back into the game. Yes. It's mm -hmm. it's been so long since I played a freaking MMO that had dying your armor. I miss yeah. that. Because yeah. you could create you wanna be, you wanna be cool. You could create guild colored armor fitting your yes. theme and stuff like that. I mean, yes, please bring in die. Sorry Good about that, guys. <laughs> I needed to get oh. that out there. Uh, yeah. Next one. What if some items had quests attached to them, crafters? Definitely. Oh yeah, definitely. That's a that's 100%, a must. Definitely. Must have, yeah. Yep. Yep. We're creating our own game here. We're speculating. <laughs> yeah. Your speculation station. Speculation station. But yeah, okay, that'd so be a cool idea. Yeah, I'm all for that. Absolutely. Because, I mean, if it's the same thing I look at. If an adventurer gets it, why doesn't a crafter get it? There's hey, no reason that they shouldn't. No, 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 quick, before you go on, because it's yep. coming in chat, um, they're talking about tattoos and stuff like this. They should, actually, they should actually create another trade skill where you're like a, a, a stylist, so you can tattoo mm -hmm. people or change their hair and stuff like that. As a, as a secondary thing you can do, I mean, why not? Just for the yeah. fun of it, why not? You could be so. I would have to now go and see Delinzia because I want to change my appearance. I'm not gonna be a beautician of Pantheon, okay? <laughs> no, I'm just saying that, that. Actually, they should actually think about doing something like that instead of having to pay money like you do on the cash shops all the time, or hope mm -hmm. that they actually give you a a, a reimbursement that you can re re change the character. Make it a trade skill. Yeah. Don't see why not. Or yep. drink a cool magic Add tattoos, that this, that, and the other. A... But you can't change, obviously, the way you look completely. You can change the hair. You can change the hair color. You can add a tattoo, but that's it. You can't, you know, refigure your complete entire body. I mean, you're not going to go and get yourself... You can't suck your junk in. Yep, exactly. You can't get a, you know, a belly tuck and stuff like that. I'm sorry, that's yeah. not going to happen. 
basically just you know the all of the the, the fancy <laughs> customization just to your character. Yeah, you know, because th- we're we're always been uh, really on on the ball for stuff like you know cosmetics on armor and weapons and all this other stuff. So why not put cosmetics for my character as a trade skill? Yep, like you know, getting a piercing for your earrings. Yeah, hmm. I know a lot of people that would do that. Yep, craziness. Yeah. Okay. I um, we got, we're ready for the next one. Go on in. Sure. Go ahead, man. Item lineage. Lineage. Should there have be a system for item lineage? Um, um, can can you guys explain that to me? Because I'm kind of lost in that thought. Is that basically a certain time, basically like family. who made it? Like so, you know, so like say I make a sword, Dal uses it. Yes. Dal uses it for so long. Oh, did I lose connection? We all, like I lost. You all did. Right. So I'm going to bring up the placeholders for you guys. So okay. you come back. Yeah, I make a um, sword. Dal uses it. He's used it for so long that it basically becomes part of the item's lineage. Yeah. And as it gets older, maybe some stats change. Mm-hmm. It's almost like the item evolves over time. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm for that definitely, because it, it, it oh. makes, it makes, it's like we said as well with the uh, armor sets. Is, you know, I would really like it to have, you know, you start off with a basic set of armor and you can advance that as well. So you could, you know, mm-hmm. I don't necessarily have to go out in the dungeon every time and get new armor, and I can have my crafter like, you know, add stuff to this piece of armor that I've got and I carry it. That's kind of also the lineage behind it as well. I carry this armor from day one till I'm, you know, reached my, you know, 50s or whatever. And Mm -hmm. it gets advanced over time through crafters, through this, through that and the other. So, yeah, I think it should uh, definitely have something similar to that. Yeah. I I think that's what they're talking about too. As long, the more you keep a piece of gear, the that's kind of increased I go along that lineage thing yeah I mean you could even go as far as like you you take like your epic sword okay you use it so much it's gaining its own experience at what you know could be a really really slow rate like a tenth of what you're gaining yeah. when it gets really really super high level maybe it becomes sentient and starts talking to you <laughs> jeez that'd be yeah. scary I know. I'd be freaked out like who's talking to me. What the hell's going on? And that'd be cool because you know, Dire Lord. Well, I'm hoping that I can be a Scar Dire Lord. Yeah. If my if my weapon turns out to be some little tree hugging, light kissing hippie, I'm throwing it away. Like a druid. <laughs> it's like no. In <laughs> fact, I'm gonna take a shower and bleach because no. You know, yeah. But if my sword's super evil, yeah! Right, super evil sword for a dire lord. Yes, I'd love it. Dragon urine and continent, but yarn. So I think we'll go into... Excellent. Go go into closing statements or something? Ah, yep. wait, wait. Do we have time oh. to... Do we have time to flash up one of the products from the... St- bring one of those up? Um, Like the shaman mouse pad and the... Uh, Dire Lord mouse pad. Let me go in Dire quickly. Lord. Let me go in. Let me go in. Add a screen. Yeah. Let's throw these up so the folks can see what's coming to our store. Um, add a window to capture. Window capture. That one. And Boom. Think, I've, and I've just Royal added. The wolf wants to have some cool stuff too. Um, he's already like, I want to go to their store. They got cool shirts. Cause he's all. He's he all he about your my shirt. stream shirts. What's your shirt, dude? <laughs> Uh, I've pulled up the uh, store here, the uh, Discord from us, and I'm going to go and start off with this. So this is basically some of the Dialord mouse pads that Dow's created. Um, yeah. Shaman stuff. Warrior mouse pads. So we're creating some uh, bits and pieces that will be up in our VOT store. When when Dal gets that ready, and then want to talk about it down quickly, give the people an info about it. Mm. Buy an awesome cool mouse pad. <laughs> I mean that's really what the it show. Is. Yeah, help support the show. Um, some of the monies are going to be supporting our show, but also to help us give out prizes as well. So if you're you know you stay tuned because we'll be giving some uh, 
game packages away pretty soon. So stay tuned. We're gonna have some competitions. But yeah, ultimately you're uh, supporting our show by buying some of this merchandise, you know, because it's um hey. Support the show. Yep. So helps. Uh, and some of the money's there. We're gonna donate to Pantheon. Yep, yep. That's one of the other things we're gonna be doing. So it's not just, you know, we're not trying to get rich off of it or anything like that. Nope. This is basically to keep the stream alive to, you know... I want to become a rich dragon. <laughs> <laughs> to buy additional stuff that makes the stream better. For instance, like green screens or microphones or when, you know, p people's headsets break down or this, that and the other. We can actually yeah, help like each other out. Last week. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what this is all for, guys. To make this show better for you guys and everything. And uh, to help Pantheon do giveaways, like Dal's already said, you know, when, when we have stuff out there, like, for instance, merchandise, we might give away some of our merchandise then, and we can actually do that because we, we've we been supported by you guys, so. Yep, anyway, let's go to the closing stage, uh, statements, and we'll let Lexa start it off. Well, needless to say, we've got a lot of crazy ideas all over the board for crafting. Mm. I am chomping at the bit right now just to see what the VR guys, just even to hear their take on it. Because I want to be a crafter again. Mm. But I, I, I can't do it unless I get treated the same whether I'm an adventurer or a crafter. Yeah, they uh, did do a post about cooking, so there's definitely cooking going to be in the game, too. So, cooking when they bring down definitely yep. a trade skill your thoughts um my thoughts it's gonna be interesting where they go with this um i hope they they do take some of our ideas and and bring crafting back to an important role in in mmo genre because um it definitely needs to come make a comeback because a lot of the games now it's just everybody can do the same stuff everybody's running to the same nodes and whacking the crap out of it trying to make a buck or two um, get rich schemes and crafting and MMOs and run through the theme park and run out of stuff to do. And then, of course, if you get an update, sometimes your crafting is void, no, and pointless. Yep. Anything to add next? I it, think I might cut you off. Players hands. No, I think I'm... I just, I just want crafting to be relevant and I want them to be treated well. And as you can oh. see, with us bringing up our... VOT store, that's crafting as well. That's why we brought it up in this show and not in another show, because that's crafting as well, guys. So anyway, I'm, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> crafting should be very important again, and crafters should play a very important part within the adventuring of, of the game itself as well. You know, like, be able to repair stuff on the go when they're, you know, they are that crafter like a tailor or a blacksmith and everything have the materials they should be able to repair our kit in the field they should be able to do all kinds of stuff for us add you know give us extra padding this that and the other make our armor look cool blah 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 it should all be done by the crafters and mm. items within the game they should be rarer smaller they shouldn't have like 10,000 different helmets like Dow's already said or 10 different 10,000 different times of breastplate I know they put a lot of this trash armor and stuff in the game for us to actually make currency well then instead of doing that put more reward in the quest from the start lift up the quest reward make the quest longer and therefore the currency what the reward we get is bigger and that way we can monetize ourselves as well and keep the air uh, economy flowing properly we don't need a hundred thousand different kinds of armor pieces in the world just to go and sell off yeah let us break it down for instance that's another good that's what Terra does Terra, you can actually dismantle the armor and turn it into pieces that you need to upgrade your armor another way of doing that you know let us be able to trash it as well not just sell it but trash it dismantle it and um, next week we will be going back into our class discussion. We're gonna, I'm gonna put a vote up on Twitter and in the forums for you guys to, you know, pass your vote on what we should talk about for the next show. I'm gonna leave that till 
Tuesday for you guys to vote on, and then we can uh, we'll carry on from there. Do a few shows with the uh, classes, and then we'll see what we'll come up with next. So with that, guys, thanks for joining in. I hope you enjoyed it. It's uh, a lot to talk about. We couldn't cover everything now, and hopefully uh, next time we get into crafting, Kodak will be able to join us because I know he has some crazy thoughts and ideas too, and I know he wants to get them out there. So thanks for watching, everyone, and see. tune in next Thursday, 4 p.m., for The Voice of Terminus. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what we're going to talk about yet, but we will. Maybe I'll crash again. Yeah, maybe, maybe uh, Lex will crash again. <laughs> so with that, guys, see you next time. Say bye, everyone. See you later. See you later. <laughs>